Hey everybody, this is Wire Dog Sec, and I'm back with another video for you guys. Today's video, we are going to be continuing on with the Junior Penetration Tester path inside of Try Hack Me, the introduction to web hacking section in the IDOR room. So just learn how to find and exploit IDOR vulnerabilities in a web application, giving you access to data that you shouldn't have. Now, let's go ahead and jump into it. Task one, what is IDOR? In this room, you're going to learn what an IDOR vulnerability is, what they look like, how to find them in a practical task, exploiting a real case scenario. It says here that IDOR stands for Insecure Direct Object Reference, and it's a type of access control vulnerability. This type of vulnerability can occur when a web server receives user supplied input to retrieve objects, files, data, documents. Too much trust has been placed on the input data and it is not validated on the server side to confirm the requested object belongs to the user requesting it. What does IDOR stand for? Well, as we can see up here, it stands for indirect or insecure direct object reference. So plug that in there. Let's continue on. Task number two, an IDOR example. Imagine you've just signed up for an online service and you want to change your profile information. You, the link you click on goes to HTTP online dash service dot THM forward slash profile. User ID equals 1305 and you can see your information. Curiosity gets the better of you. You try to or try changing the user underscore ID value to 1000 instead and this is what it would look like. And to your surprise, you can now see another user's information. You've now discovered an IDOR vulnerability. Ideally, there should be a check on the website to confirm that the user information belongs to the user logged requesting it. Using what you've learned above, click on the view site button and try to receive a flag by discovering and exploiting an IDOR vulnerability. So let's go ahead and try that here. All right, so what's the flag here? It says check through the emails below and try and identify an URL that looks like it could potentially be vulnerable to an IDOR attack and click on it. All right, so let's see here. Something about online store, invoice one, two, three, four, Discord stuff, and what's this here? All right, so it looks like maybe this one will be the one we're looking for here. Yeah, one, two, three has been, okay. So let's go ahead and click on it. Order one, two, three, four, Harry A. Howe. Now you can view your order information or confirmation, which contains details. Try changing the URL below to view the order number 1000 and then press enter to load it. All right, so let's go ahead and do that here. A thousand, enter, and there we go. See, now we're Reese. We can look at um, Reese Saunders stuff. Go ahead and copy, paste this over. Now you can see the risk of that, right? You don't want this to be happening in your environment. All right, encoded IDs. Let me go ahead and close out of this. Task number three, finding or I doors and encoded IDs. When passing data from page to page, either by post data, query strings, or cookies, web developers will often first take the raw data and encode it. Encoding ensures that the receiving web server will be able to understand the contents. Encoding changes binary data into ASCII string commonly using the lowercase a to z, uppercase a to z, 0 to 9, and equal. Character for padding. The most common encoding technique on the web is Base64 encoding and can usually be pretty easy to spot. You can use websites like Base64, decode.org to decode string, then edit the data and recode it again using the H or using the uh, basics for encode.org and then resubmit the web request to see if there is a change in response. See the image below as a graphical example of this process here. You can see there's the encoded information now it's decoded and this is what it actually looks like in human readable format. And then tamper they changed the ID to 10 from 30 and code it again and then you can see the new um, encoded format here and then submit it. 
to uh, the victim. What is a common type of encoding used by websites? Well, it's going to be base64 as we saw up above they were referencing. So let's go ahead and continue on to task number four here. Finding IDORs and haste or hashed IDs. Hashed IDs are a little bit more complicated to deal with than encoded ones, but they may follow a predictable pattern, such as being the hashed version of the integer value. For example, the ID number 123 would become this hash here if MD5 hashing were in use. It's worthwhile putting any discovered hashes through a web service such as Crack Nation or CrackStation.net, which has a database of billions of hash to uh, value results. Let's see if we can find any matches. Now, questioner, what is a common algorithm used for hashing IDs? Well, as explained up above here, MD5 was the one they had mentioned. So let's go ahead and plug that in here. And let's continue on to task number five, finding IDORs and unpredictable IDs. If the ID cannot be detected using the above methods, an excellent method of IDOR detection is to create two accounts and swap the ID numbers between them. If you can view the other user's content using their ID number, while still being logged in with a different account or not logged in at all, you found a valid IDOR vulnerability. What is the number or what is the minimum number of accounts you need to cre create to check for IDORs between accounts? And it said that you needed a minimum of, I believe it was two, right? There we go. Hey everybody, just a quick little blurb here. As you can see here, most people that view my channel are not subscribers. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're enjoying the video, please consider hitting the like button. It helps get me in the algorithm, helps spread the good word out there, helps bring more people and increase our glorious community here. All right, I'm all about helping out others. I know what it's like to come up in cybersecurity or even try to get into cybersecurity and not knowing where to look. I'm just having this channel up so I can help out other people. All right, that's all I got. Task six. Where are IDORs located? The vulnerable endpoint you're targeting may not always be something you see in the address bar. It could be content your browser loads and via an AJAX request or something that you find referenced in a JavaScript file. Sometimes endpoints could have an unreferenced parameter that may have been of some use during development and got pushed to production. For example, you may notice a call to user details displaying your user information authenticated through your session. But through an attack known as parameter mining, you discover a parameter called user underscore ID that you can use to display other users information. For example, users details user underscore ID equals one, two, three. Read the above. All right, we've already done that. Now task number seven here, a practical IDOR example. Begin by pressing the start machine button, which we've already done. So I'm just going to go down to uh, show split screen here and move over to the attack box area. Okay, they want us to go out to this website here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this over. Open up Firefox here. Firstly, you'll need to log in. To do this, click on the computer section and create an account once logged in. Click on your accounts tab. So let's go ahead and navigate to this website. All right, looks like we're back to the Acme IT support site. All right, now let's see here. We'll need to get logged in. And where do we see that at? This is under customers. All right. create an account so sign up here we'll just do wire dog sec there and then test at email.com or whatever this is going to be password one two three very strong password here again there we go and we're just going to go ahead and save it and make it easier in case we need to get back in here all right, so go to the Your Accounts tab. Here we are. The Your Accounts section gives you the ability to change your information, such as username, email address, and password. You'll notice the username and email fields are pre-filled in with your information. 
we'll start by investigating how this information gets pre-filled. If you open your browser's developer tools, select the network tab, and then refresh the page, you'll see a call to an endpoint with the path of API v1 customer um, ID equals user underscore ID. So let's go ahead and navigate to these developer tools. See if I'm in the right area. There we go. This should be it here. And let me try to make this a little bit bigger. All right, so here's the network. And they said hit refresh. There we go. Customer ID equals 15. All right, you can test this ID parameter for an idle or vulnerability by changing the ID to another user's ID. Try selecting user IDs one and three and answer the questions below. All right, so they want us to change this in here. All right, now let's see if I can change this to one, send. All right, after that request was sent and changed, see I had changed it to ID one, right from the request here. And this is the username, Adam84. So we'll go ahead and plug this in here, Adam84. And his last one is to change it to three. So we're gonna do the same thing here. If you go back to this ID section here, Take that out, place it with three, send it, and then John 911. And they want us to have the email address, so let's go ahead and grab it out of here. If it'll let me. There we go. And that is pretty much it, folks. Remember, when we start getting into burp and stuff, you can do that all the stuff through burp or OWASP, Zap, whatever tool you want to use, but they want us to use develop, developer tools. So once again, to get back in here, all right, let's just go ahead and close out of here. Go back to developer tools, right? Firefox, more tools, and then web developer tools. And you're gonna take a look at the network section here, refresh the page, and you'll see a call out to this here, where it says uh, API v1 customer ID equals 15, which is yours. All right, you're going to get in there and you're going to um, edit, basically edit this request. All right, edit and resend. And you can modify the ID, change this to one, hit send. And then you're going to go to the response tab. And there you go. Same thing with three. But hopefully you guys found this video valuable. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. Comment below your thoughts and opinions on information scared in the video. As always, thank you for watching, have a nice day, and I will see you later.